Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 44th and Broadway. Our address is 4401 West Broadway. Our regular hours of service are 10 a.m. We have our morning Bible study. 11 a.m. We have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. We have our Sunday evening worship. Also, on Wednesdays, we have midweek Bible study service at 7 p.m. The Western Church of Christ also presents a call-in Bible talk show called More Bible Talk. More Bible Talk is presented on WLLV. That is 1240 on the AM dial. More Bible Talk is presented on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The call-in show allows people to call in and their Bible questions are answered in a Bible manner. The Western Church of Christ also has a website. The website is www.westncoc.com. Feel free to use this website as you can retrieve sermons that are presented from the pulpit. We offer it in video format as well as in audio format and streaming data. Colossians 3, 16, and 17. And it reads, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do so every, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I just read Colossians 3, 16, and 17. Amen. Let us turn our comic book to page 147. <laughs> 147. I will be a soldier brave and to 
and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee every hour. Through this land, this pilgrim land, protect me by thy saving power. Hear my plea, my people plea, O oh Lord, dear Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. When I wander through the valley, dim toward the city, By a crown of life ever. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden friend. There's no other friend on whom I may depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I Father, as again we come before thee as humble as we know how, thank thee for the many blessings that thou hast stored upon us from our early existence up to the present time. Pray in the Father that you continue to be with us as we travel along life's highway. We pray in the Father for each home that is represented here this morning. We pray in the Father for the sick among us, especially those in the household of faith. I also pray for Sister Renee, uh, Sister Spencer, Sister, pray that she will, that you will be merciful on her and that she will hear your, hear your Lord, cut and obey the gospel as if it's necessary. We pray, we pray in the Father for those who have a desire to be here and for some reason cannot. We pray, Father, for the bereaved among us. Pray, Father, that we, they might be strengthened. We pray in the Father that the thing that we do will say here is for the upliftment of our kingdom. We pray, Father, for the slow and the concern that they too might come out and work in our soul, salvation, and free and family. We pray for the Father when we meet our neighbors or our people in the community that we will be able to teach them that word and that song. We might be able to say some. Most of all, Father, we thank you for your son who came, hung on the cross, shed his blood for the remission of our, for the remission of our sin. These are the blessings we ask our son's name forever. Amen. 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 It too will be our song of invitation immediately after the lesson. Now, if you would, let us turn to page 384. 384. And if it is comfortable for you, please stand. Three hundred and eighty-four. I have heard of a land on a faraway strand. Tis a beauty. Yeah. 
sickness, where we will be able to be around the throne, worshiping our God throughout all eternity. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful day that Amen. is going to be. Amen. On two Sundays ago, I mentioned that we would be talking about worship talking about worship. And on last Sunday, we started our series on worship, dealing with four types of worship, four types of worship. And when we think about our worship on today, is our worship acceptable unto God? Or are we in that category where we have self-willed worship? 
or our worship is ignorant worship or is our worship in vain we need to to think about those three types and understand that God accepts neither one but the worship that he accepts is for the person to worship him in spirit and in truth for God is a spirit in the book of John chapter 4 and verse 24 as we look at that and think about it for God is a spirit and those that worship him must must worship him in spirit and in truth and on today and I as we talk about this the worship of our God we are looking at the the idea of singing praises unto him. I am under the impression that some people are allowing some men to dictate on how they are to worship our God. If you are a Bible believer, if you are one that says you are doing the will of the Father, you will lift your voices high unto God, and you will praise him for all that he has done for you and I. And this is just not for God, it's for each one of us. Although some in here may be masked, you can still lift your voice unto God. Praise him in a manner that is acceptable unto him. The thing that we have to understand is when we start talking about worshiping God and worshiping him in a manner that he is pleased with, there are some that will go back to the Old Testament and they were trying to bring things forward and say instead of praising him in song, we can praise him with instruments. I, I did not hear not one instrument on this morning except for the instrument of our voice. Amen. That's the only instrument I, I did not even hear anybody's phone go off. That's a good thing sometimes, Brother Brian. I hadn't called your name in quite some time. How you doing, my brother? I want us to understand the importance of worshiping God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And this is not talking about shouting. This is not talking about stomping your feet or clapping your hands. This is talking about singing praises unto him. That is where I want to direct your minds to on this morning. How are we supposed to sing unto God? How are we supposed to praise him? We're going to look at a couple of scriptures from the Old Testament because I believe that, again, that's where many people will go and they will try to bring these things forward. But I want you to understand that God has a way to direct man's minds to what he wants them to do. So we find in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 25, that is 1 Chronicles chapter 25, and starting with verse 1. Starting with verse 1. Because people always say, well, David did this or David did that. But I want you to act like you have a mirror right now. And I want you to look into that mirror and ask yourself, am I David? Am I the one that, if you want to do what David did, are you the one that's sleeping with someone else's wife? Vice versa, or are you the one that's sleeping with someone else's husband? Ask yourself that question if you want to do what David did. Because not only do they say we can play instruments, but we can also dance before God. Nowhere in the New Testament worshiping God does God say anything about dancing before him, does he? No, there was a passage, or there is a passage that talked about they heard singing and dancing when the prodigal son had come back home. But that wasn't worshiping God. That was in honor to give thanks for the son coming back home. They were having a party. It wasn't worshiping God. Yeah, thankful to God, but it wasn't worshiping God. It was in honor of that son. 
But what we're talking about today is honoring God for who God is. So we find again in 1 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 1. David and the chiefs of the service also set apart for the service the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of uh, uh, Jephuthun, who prophesied with leers and hearts and with symbols, the list of those who did the work and their duties. Now I want you to, to look at this and I want you to, to see what they did once again. They prophesied. You know what a person does when he prophesies? He tells the word of God, the word that God spoke to him. That's what he did. We do not have prophets today. So if we do not have prophets today, I want you to remove yourself, remove your minds from saying, I can do what David did. He says, of the sons of Asaph, Zachor, Joseph, Nath Nathalia, uh, Asherah, sons of Asaph, under the direction of Asaph, who prophesied under the direction of the king of Jabudan, the sons of Jabudan, uh, Gid, Aliyah, Zerah, Jashiah, Shemia, Hashabiah, and Matthiathia. Six under the direction of the father of Jebuzon, who prophesied with the leer in thanksgiving and praise to the Lord. Of Heman, the sons of Heman, Bakiah, Matthiah, Aziel, Shubiel, and Jeremoth, and Hanamiah, Ahaniah, Leathah. We're going to skip all the rest of <laughs> You know, y'all laughing at me. How many of you can pronounce them? <laughs> All of those people. That's what we want to look at, right? In verse 5. All of these were the sons of Hedon, the king's seer, according to the promise of God to exalt him, for God had given Hedon 14 sons and three daughters. 14 sons and three daughters. God had given them to him. They were all in the direction of their father, in the music, in the house of the Lord, with cymbals, harps, and lyres, for the service of the house of God. Asaph, Jabathon, and Heman were under the order of the king. In verse 7, the number of them, along with their brothers, who were trained in singing to the Lord, all who were skillful was 288. I don't want anyone to raise their hand, but I want to ask you a simple question. How many of you past elementary school trained in singing? How many of you? How many of you are skilled? How many of you will not miss a note when it comes to singing praises unto God? Yeah, I know we have some people here that were in band and they can read music, but how many of you can sing? Skillful. I want you to know that these things were set apart in the Old Testament in order to worship God. Everybody wasn't commanded to sing. Why? Because everyone didn't have that skillful voice. In the book of 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 29 and the verse is 25. I want you to understand that when we start talking about singing unto the Lord, when we start talking about praising him with song, when we start talking about doing what he has authorized, we have to go back sometime and look at what went on in the Old Testament to find out what we're supposed to do in the New Testament. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 29 and the verse is 25. 2 Chronicles chapter 29 and the verse is 25. And he stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, harps, and lyres, according to the commandment of David and of Gad, the, the king's seer, and of Nathan, the prophet. For the commandment was from the Lord through his prophets. The commandment was from the Lord. Who would sing and who would play? 
So in the Old Testament, there were singers and there were players. Now, how many again, I ask, of the number that we have here were skillful in singing that you may get a contract you know, you listen to people's voices sometimes when they sing, you say, man, that person should be a, a musician or that person should be a singer somewhere. That person should have their own show. It's amazing how many people can, can really sing and, and stand out and people can admire their singing and they want to be entertained by them. Then we even have people that can play. People that can play drums, people that can play guitars, and my, my two grandsons, they laugh at me and they tell me, Papa, you can't play. And I just shake my head and I remark back to them, you can't either. But you know, they're learning. I don't really don't want to learn. I just grab, grab the guitar and I just try to make up some stuff and it really don't sound good to them, but it sounds good to me. But I want you to know that these people that were set aside to play unto God, it sounded good to God. These people could play. But you know what? Today, we don't have people that God has set aside to play music unto him. I don't care if you say, well, I'm a born musician. You are, y'all don't want me to tell you what you are, do you? Maybe you need to hear it. You're a born liar. You're a born liar. Yeah. Because none of us were born knowing how to play. Just like none of us were born how to love. We're taught these things. We're taught how to love God. We're taught how to love the next man. We're taught things that are important to God. But singing, when we get to it, you're going to find that God didn't say, pull that person aside and train them how to sing well before me. You're not going to see that. But what you do see is scripture saying that we do not, we do not, we do not look at the Old Testament for our way of worshiping. Why? Why? Colossians chapter 2 and the verse is 14. Colossians chapter 2 and the verse is 14. We think about our Lord. We think about what he went through. When he went to the cross, he just didn't go by himself. He took something with him. He didn't take anybody with him, but he took something with him. And what he took with him was the commandments. Not what we're looking at today in which we're supposed to be obedient to, but he took that old law. And this is what the Bible says. By counseling the record of the debt that stood against us with his legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. You know what that includes? That includes those people or that idea of individuals saying, I'm a musician for God, or I'm a minister of music. Or those people that, that have set themselves apart from everybody else and say, I should be in a choir somewhere, singing before people, entertaining them. We do not want to be entertained. Amen. We want to be edified. Amen. And that's what we're going to find out before we get to the end of this lesson, that we sing in order to edify one another. Amen. We sing in order to give praises unto God. And when someone tells you that you can't sing when you come together to worship God, that man obviously does not know the word of God, does not understand the, the concept of worship. And so we have to look at this and we have to say, as we have been hearing, that it is better to obey God than man. We find in the book of First Chronicles, uh, First Corinthians, I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and the verses 20. Paul writes here to the church of Corinth in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 20 and he says, To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself 
under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. We today need to understand we cannot compromise God's word. Paul wasn't compromising here. He was just telling you how he was going to or how he was winning people over to Christ. You ever heard that person say, or, you know, he invited me to come worship with him, or she invited me to come worship with her, and what I said to them, if, if you go with me, I'll go with you. I'm guilty. I've done that before. But you know, here's the thing. When you learn better, you do better. We do not compromise God's word. You can't go to a place of worship. I don't care if it's a denominational place. It's still a place of worship. And sit there and say that I am worshiping God. And think that God is accepting your worship when he did not authorize what you're doing. So we need to know that Paul, yes, he became as one under the law, but not under the law. He looked at the people that was outside of Christ, but he understood that he was in Christ, but he still did the things in order to win them over. And we have to do the same today. We have to win people over, and how are we going to do that? We're going to do that by the word of God. Not what he said, what she said, what you think, what you feel, nor your opinion. It's by the word of God that we're going to win people over. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and the verse is 15. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and the verse is 15. Let's start with verse 13. But we are, in 2 Thessalonians 2, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, so then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us either by our spoken word or by our letter. Now, now these traditions that, that Paul is, is mentioning here, these are things that are right. These are things that God will accept. It is not going back and referring to those things that we read about on last week where he mentions in Matthew chapter 15, where, you know, these worship me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, teaching for the doctrines and the commandments of men. That's not what we're looking at there. We're looking at the things that are right before God, and that God will accept those things because it is what he has authorized. Are we willing to accept that today as being true? So what that leads us to is that leads us to these passages of scripture right here. Again, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Lift your voices high so that we may be edified, so that you may be edified, so that God may be glorified. Now, how many of you, and I just want to ask this question. We're going to get to the scripture in a minute, but I want to ask this question. When you are happy, how many of you decide that you want to play an instrument? That, that you want to go out and buy a drum set or go out and buy an electric guitar or an acoustic guitar or a, 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 a timbre or a tambourine, whatever what instrument that you have a desire to play when you're happy, do you get the urge to just go out and buy that instrument? You know, our God is very, very wise. He gonna, he, you're going to find, as we look at this, he tells you, if you're happy, sing. Because we all have a voice. We don't have to go out and purchase one, do we? No, we don't. He has given us that voice. 
And he expects us to use it in order to glorify him and even to express how we feel. He's given us a voice. So let's do what's right. And we look at these passages of Scripture. We have nine passages of Scripture right here. Justin read uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. As we think about worshiping God, as we think about singing praises to him, this is one of the things that we do when we come together to worship. We sing praises unto God because he has commanded us to do so. If you're here and you're not singing, why are you here? Why are you here? Was it just to come to take the communion? Was it just to come to give as God has allowed you to prosper? Was it to come just to see what the next man had on? We need to ask ourselves these questions. Because in the end, God is going to hold each one of us accountable. For what we've done in this body, whether good or whether bad, he's going to hold us accountable on how we worship him. I want you to know that everyone, as we read from time to time and we quote from time to time, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Just because you're here doesn't mean that you're going to make it in. I was speaking to a young man yesterday, and he, had, he told me, he said, you know, he said, I've been thinking. He said, it just came to me yesterday that, yes, he believes in heaven. And he said, you, you know, he heaven has to be basically better than here on earth. But is that true? Is it true? And then I answered him, I said, yes, it's true. Heaven it is so much better than down here on this earth. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to glorify the Father around the throne throughout all eternity. We're going to be in a place where there's not going to be any hatred. We're going to be in a place where there's not going to be any lying, where there's not going to be any stealing, where there's not going to be any sin whatsoever. But we're going to be around the throne. And he thought about that. And he said, what, what time do y'all start the worship service? And I told him, and, and he said, I'm going to come by. He, he's not here, and if he was, he'll still get talked about <laughs> in a good way. And hopefully he'll come and he'll, he'll sit and he'll listen to God's word. And he'll understand that the ways of the world is not the ways of God. Amen. When someone tells you this is going to be heaven right here, that person is not telling you the truth. It's not telling you the truth. It's about God, and that's what we have to look at, and that's what we have to think about. So we find again in Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, and the verse is 16 and 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing songs and hymns, and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. To God. It, it, again, we're admonishing one another, Amen. but we're singing to God. Amen. Now, just as those two tell me I can't play a guitar, you know what they tell me? Papa, you can't sing. <laughs> I say, I'm not singing to you. <laughs> I'm not a skilled singer. But we did win sweepstakes. And I was a member of that choir. And I want you to understand that when one person is in a choir and that person can't sing, that choir doesn't win sweepstakes. <laughs> now put that in writing. I want you to understand something. No, I'm not the best of singers. But God when I am singing to him and I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing, it's acceptable to him. Man. It's acceptable to him. So that's what we need to understand when we start talking about how we are to sing. You know, we encourage people, sing, I can't hear you sing. And then when they get in the car, they're singing all this worldly stuff and, and I can hear this one voice and this one voice telling them, I don't want to hear you sing. If you can't sing in worship service, do not sing that song. And that's not me. That's that other person telling them that. 
And I want you to understand that that's what we should do. We should teach our children that singing to God is more important than singing to the world or singing the songs of the world. And so what it says here in verse 17, and whatever you do in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So those two verses go together. Actually, all the verses that in Scripture go together. Man. You just have to look at them and you have to understand that sometimes you have to take this one and then this one and you have to bring them together like it's a puzzle. And understand God will give us the understanding to do what's right. So we look at Ephesians chapter 5 and the verse is 19. All the scriptures we're looking at on, on singing, not one of them is you're going uh, you're gonna to hear that says play an instrument of music. Now, is there anything wrong with instruments of music? No. No. It just doesn't have a place in worshiping God. Amen. Whether you're here in this assembly or whether you're at home, it does not have a place in worshiping God. No place. A man came to my house and, and he, you know, he was mad at me. Who are you to tell me that I can't play my guitar to God? I'm nobody. If you want to play your guitar to God, play it to God, play it all day long. But understand this, it's unacceptable. He was an elder in the Lord's church. And we had that conversation. There's no way, being an elder of the Lord's church, that that conversation should have ever took place. Amen. Where a person is confused about the worshiping of God and what God accepts when he says that he's an elder in the Lord's church. Now, this is just not for elders to understand. This is for every member to understand. Yeah. If God did not tell us to play an instrument to him, he's not going to accept it. So let us understand that. Ephesians 5 and the verse is 19. Ephesians 5 and the verse is 19. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. If your heart's not in it, you might as well not do it. Might as well not do it. Because that is what God is looking at. He's looking at the heart. And if he's looking at the heart and what's coming out of the mouth does not match, what do we say? With your lips you honor me, but, with your, but your heart is far from me. So, so they have to match. They have to match. Just like when a person says, I love you, but their actions show different, it's no good to say it. So we do what God says. Worshiping him is according to what he has commanded. And we find in Matthew chapter 26, Matthew chapter 26, and the verse is 30. Jesus, before he was crucified, he went through some things with his disciples. He, he ate the, the Passover meal with them. And then we find here in, in verse 30, it says, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. When they had sung a hymn. Now, these men that, that were with Jesus, the Bible did not name one of them as being one of those skilled singers. Did it? No, it did not. Th these were his disciples. These were ordinary men. Just like you and I. Ordinary. Uh, until Jesus called them to be his apostles. Then they were not so much as extraordinary, but they were set apart to do the work of the Lord. But it says, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Garden, not olives, not playing an instrument, but they sung. Who? They did. Who was the day? All that was there. That's what I'm going to get out of it. If you get something different, let me know. But they had sung a hymn. And that's not the tune. So let us understand that singing has to be done the way God wants to be done. 
1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14 and the verse is 15. All the music that, or the instruments of music that are mentioned in New Testament is spiritual. All of it is spiritual. But I was singing, people can hear that. And it needs to be heard in order to glorify God, in order to edify one another. We find in 1 Corinthians 14 and the verse is 15. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will with my mind, but I will sing with my mind also. Again, your heart has to be in it in order for it to be acceptable to God. Praying sometimes is removed and play is put there. Have you ever been to a concert? And when you went to that concert, the music was so loud that you really couldn't hear the people singing. Amen. That's the way it is with, with some people worshiping God today. The, the music, they're putting the emphasis on the, all the music that is being played, and the singing cannot be heard. So obviously, the worship is unacceptable to God if that's taking place, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's unacceptable. But he tells us not to play, but he tells us to sing. Oh, are you willing to do that this morning? Are you willing to lift your voices unto God and sing unto him? Then we find in Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, and the verse is 12. Hebrews chapter 2, and the verse is 12. we we'll start with verse 11. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I would tell of your name to my brothers and the midst of the congregation I will sing praise. In the midst of the congregation I will sing praise. When we are together, we sing praise unto God. We do. Yes, we have a song leader. Brother Glenn is that song leader on today. But we all sing along with him. We don't allow him to, to stand before us and sing a solo. And sometimes there the brothers may choose a song that, that people don't know. And they begin to sing that song. And they find that, oh, people are not singing with me. So I say, okay, let, let's get another song. Because they know that God has not set them aside to sing by themselves before the people. So in the midst of the congregation, and this is everybody singing praises unto God once again. Then we find Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And the verse is 15. So remember sacrifice. That, that's something that's sacrificed before God has to be something that's pure. Has to be something that God is going to accept. So we find here, through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. The fruit of lips that, that acknowledge his name. Not by playing, but by singing. The fruit of our lips. Even we're talking sometimes. You know, there, there's those groups out there that the preacher can be preaching and oh, they, it, it begins to get good and what they begin to do is that person on the organ or the piano, they began, they began to play soft music. Or when they're praying, they're, they're playing soft music. I want you to know again that that's unacceptable before God. There are times, you know, from time to time, I, I get, you know, called to do a funeral and it's of a person that, that has died that's part of a denominational group or part of no group at all, but it's held in a denominational place. And they have the person sitting at the organ or the piano and I, I walk over to them and I say, look, when, when I'm preaching, don't play. 
And then there are even some songs that they're playing. Now it's theirs. They can do whatever they want to do. But there are some songs that, that, are, that are, they're getting ready to sing. And I go over and I say, don't play during this song right here because I want to sing with it. You know, we have to take a stand for what's right. And when we want our worship to, now I know that's not a worship service, but again, when you're singing uh, spiritual songs, you're singing to God. When you're praying, you're, play, you're praying to God. When it's time to hear God's word, it's time to hear God's word. You, you don't need to hear anything else but God's word. That's why we tell our children sometimes, Shh, be quiet. I'm trying to listen. And I tell you, when the baby's crying, let that baby cry. I can talk louder than that baby, just like we did when we was out there in the world and that music was playing, and every time they turned the music up, we got loud. That's the way I am when I hear a baby crying. I get loud. So you may hear God's word. Focus on what is being done. Here we are trying to focus on our worship to God that God accepts. Not the way, again, man dictates, but the way God has commanded. Our God. He wanted his way. And that's the way we need to give it to him. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. You looked at those movies and you still watch them where a person is in jail and that person has the blues or, or that person, you know, may be happy. And that person is in that jail cell and he is playing some type of instrument, whether it's those bars or whether it's a harmonica or some other instrument that they have given him. And he's playing that instrument and singing to God. Well, we find two individuals right here that were in jail. And as they were in jail or in prison, they prayed and they sung. It says about midnight, Paul in, in Acts 16, 25, and about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Listening to them. We can learn something from somebody as they're praying. We can learn something from somebody as they're singing. Teaching and admonishing teaching and admonishing. There is something about the songs that we sing. Listen to the words. Look at the words. Know what you're singing and know that it's acceptable to God. Know this. Know this. We find in James chapter 5 and the verse is 18. James chapter 5 and the verse is 18. Start with verse 13 and come down. James 5, 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Let him pray. If anyone is cheerful, let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray for over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. If he has committed sins, it will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. For three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, the heaven gave rain and the earth bore its fruit. We go back up to 13 and we have to understand again that when we pray, then our prayer has to be accepted to God. And we look at Elijah, Elijah being a righteous man, God accepted his prayer. Prayed that it would not rain and then prayed that it would rain. Same thing with our singing. If anyone is cheerful, and I mentioned this earlier, you don't run and buy an instrument just because you're happy. He said, let him sing. Let him sing. Well, what you singing about? Why are you singing? Just happy. Just happy. I'm singing praises to my God. And a lot of that we make up songs. But again, as you make up that song, let it be accepted to God. Let it be what God accepts and let it be what you are going to be judged according to and that judgment is going to be good. 
And then last we find in Romans chapter 15, Romans chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. Verse 8 and 9. I want us to know that the law was given to the Jews. The law was never given to Gentiles. Never given to Gentiles, only to the Jews. We have to accept the law of liberty and do what it says to be pleasing to God. It says in verse 8, For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God and his mercy. As it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. Sing to your name. Now, when we lift our voices, let us know once again, we're singing to God. We're praising him. We're trying to direct minds of others to God and what he accepts. Our worship need to be in spirit and in truth. We have to have Bible for what we do. And I believe that looking at these nine passages of scripture right here, that we have enough Bible to know that when God says sing, he means it. Amen. He means it. So nowhere. If you can find where God has authorized you to play before him, please, by all means, show it to me. Show it to me. But you're not going to find it, so I don't want you to waste your time looking for it. It's not there. Today, if you're here and you're not a child of God and you want to become one, the opportunity is yours to come and to make a confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hearing according to Romans 10, 17, believing according to Acts, I mean John chapter 8, verse 24, repenting according to Luke chapter 13, verse 3 and 5, confessing according to Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, being baptized according to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, in order to be saved, and then live faithful until the very end. If you're here and you're straight away from the fold, we're asking you to come back. Make that confession according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Confess your faults to him, and he is just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. If you're here in your subject, we ask you to please come as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. O oh, soul of mine, be not alarmed at what the Lord may say. Some future time, when I am old, I'll choose the heavenly way. Time, time, Three.
sin to bar, I'll turn and him obey. Time, time, time enough yet, oh soul, why be alarmed? The heavenly to page 459. 459. <clears throat> I'm in the way, the bright and shiny way. I'm in the glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is clearer and the way grows clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Onward I go. Rejoicing in his love, I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see him in that home above. Oh, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grows is clearer for I'm in the glory land way. Man, let us pray. <laughs> Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you to Heavenly Father for this time to come together to worship thee in spirit and in truth. We thank you to Heavenly Father for what thy Son has done for us. For that, Father, we are indeed grateful. We thank you, the Heavenly Father, for each and every member that is here this morning. We pray, the Heavenly Father, that God will continue to give us strength and give us the will to do what you would have us to do. We pray, the Heavenly Father, for the sick and shut in of this congregation. We pray, the Heavenly Father, that God will continue to bless and strengthen them and to be thy will. We pray, the Heavenly Father, for the elders of this congregation, that God will continue to bless these men and strengthen these men. They will continue to lead thy people according to thy word. Amen. We pray the Heavenly Father for those that are traveling. We pray the Heavenly Father that I will be with them. We pray the Heavenly Father also for those who have lost loved ones. Amen. We pray the Heavenly Father that I will comfort them as only you can. We thank the Heavenly Father for speaking out. We thank the Heavenly Father for the message. We pray the Heavenly Father that I will continue to be with him and continue to strengthen him. And we pray the Heavenly Father that we as our children will let our light shine wherever we go in this world doing those things that always please thee. It is in thy son's name we do pray and ask these blessings. Amen. 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 